All right, good morning, everybody. How you guys doing? Good, great. Thank you, because it's that kind of a day. This is, this is a party today, what we're, what's going to happen here. This is, this is Baptism Sunday. This is the Sunday where, where people make a, a declaration that, that they belong to Jesus. And so one of, one of my favorite Sundays of the year, and we really have no idea how this is going to go. Right, we we have uh, uh, Brandon and Helen who are who are going to get baptized. I, I know I'm I'm 99 percent sure of that. And then and then we'll see what God does in the hearts and the minds of of the rest of you, right? So so we're gonna have we're gonna have fun here. Uh, but before we we get into this, I, I want to kind of demystify baptism because depending on your background, we have a different understanding of baptism or or maybe no understanding at all. And so I I want to I want to unpack this. Uh, but before we get there, let's let's take a step back and let's invite God into our time because I mean we've talked about this for weeks now. The King is the King is here, He's with us, and that's that's an incredible thing. And so let let's let's make sure we welcome Him, invite Him into our time, and acknowledge that He is here with us. So if you would, let's bow and then uh, let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you, Lord, that. Uh, that you're here with us in spite of who we are, in spite of where we've been and what we've done, you come, Lord, and you, you have such a deep passion, a deep love for us. God, I, I pray that by the power of your spirit that you will move among us today, that you will, you will crack open the callous shell around our heart and that you will speak directly to us, God, and that we will be a people fit for the name of, of Christian, of, of little, little Christ, little Jesus. People who, who are determined to follow after you. Welcome, God. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I, I've got a slide, and I want to know how many of you guys know what is on this next slide. How many of you guys have seen that little, that little floating tool there? Anybody recognize that tool? Right, it's the universal IKEA tool, right? We, we, know, we know the tool, right? Anytime you make a purchase... At Ikea, you get that thing, and, and with that thing, you can put together whatever they got. Whatever is in that box, you, you can do that. We found this out a few years back. Uh, we, uh, as, as a staff, we, we upgraded offices. This is like, wow, like 10 years ago or so. We were in this little 1,000-square-foot office, and we moved into this 3,300-square-foot office, and we were so excited about that. And, and spare no expense, we're going to Ikea, right? we got to get some office furniture. Uh, so, so we pack up in, in the, uh, the, the early 90s conversion van that we used to pull all of our trailers with, and uh, uh, we, we, we brought our little quarry trailer with us, and we hightailed it down to Ikea. And, and you know, we're, we're fairly frugal around, fr- frugal around the quarry, and so instead of doing a separate staff team building event, this was now our staff team building event. It's an Ikea thing, right? And so, so we go down and and uh, Man- Mandy's there, uh, and, and she organized everything. She knew where everything was, and she knew what we had to get. And so we loaded all the stuff up and started driving back and, and, and got back to the office. And that's when the fun begins because you get to take everything out of the box, and you get to put it all together. Anybody here like putting together Ikea furniture? Anyone? There's a few. It's like, it's, it's like Legos for adults, right? I mean, it's not all bad. And we, you can have fun. The, the, problem, the problem is... Uh, y- uh, you have to be a person who follows the directions because they give you directions, right, with the little, the little person thing. I'm not sure what that is on, that they use, but, but, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four. And, and if you follow the directions, things go together as they should. But the challenge is a lot of us, we just, I got this. Right? And we like to kind of go our own way and, and do our own thing. And, and it's kind of similar in, in this Jesus thing, too. Right? Uh, we, we, like, we like to do our own thing. We like to go our own way. We want the benefits of Jesus, but, but, but we want to ignore those things that challenge us, the things that take us out of our comfort zone. You see, following Jesus is, is pretty simple on paper. Pretty straightforward. I mean, no, no more so than, than in the act of baptism, right? But, but over time, we've complicated this thing, 
right? We've added different steps. We've, we've created confusion where there shouldn't be any confusion. And so today, I want to I wanna bring some clarity to this thing called baptism. By, by going back to New Testament texts and, and taking a look at what baptism was for those first century Christians. And, and from that first century experience, answering some of the questions that we might have about baptism. All right, so, so let's, let's, uh, let's start there. Let's start with Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. This is kind of the preeminent verse, uh, passage, when we, when we look at baptism. This is, we're going to start in verse 36. If you have your Bibles, open up with me to Acts chapter 2. And there's a lot of scripture that we're going to go through today, and we're not going to read through every single verse, but we're going to look at this thing together. All right, so let me give you context here. This is, the, the, this is Peter, one of Jesus' uh, disciples, and uh, he is preaching now to this huge crowd in Jerusalem. This is the same Peter who just a few days later denied Jesus. But now all of a sudden, uh, because the, the Spirit of God is in him, he is standing up in front of a crowd preaching boldly to this crowd. And, and this is crazy because he's speaking in one language, but they're all hearing in their own native language. This is nothing short of, of, of a miracle of God. And uh, he's, he's sharing with them who God is. And in verse 36, we'll, we'll start there. We read, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified. Everyone in the crowd, he's talking to the people who just killed Jesus, whom you crucified. He made him both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. I'm reading from the NIV version. They were, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the apostles, brothers, what, what shall we do? How, what are we supposed to do with that? And Jesus, or Peter, just re- responds, repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Turn away from your sin and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. See, we're, we're actually in this passage, which is pretty cool. That's you and me. For all whom the Lord our God will call. And with many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptized. Right in that moment, were were baptized. About 3,000. I mean, that was a a party in that moment. So from the very beginning of of, of the church, we see this in Acts 2. That as people were were convicted, they, they believed, they repented, and then they were immediately baptized into the church. They weren't perfect. They didn't have it all figured out. They didn't go to the baptism class, right? They didn't have their theology all figured out quite yet. They just did what they were told. They followed the instruction. The rest of Acts tells the story of of how the, the, the early days of the church, placing a special significance on baptism. And so, so what I want to do in, in these next moments is kind of kind of peel away, kind of kind of peel the fog back that's been created over the past two thousand years of church history. And let's look, let's look at this first century church and how they would answer the questions. And the first question is this: Why should you be baptized? Why why should anyone be baptized? And the answer is really simple: It's just to follow to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. As Christians, really the, the name Christian means little Christ. And, and so, so we do what Jesus did. What we, we, follow, we literally follow him. Uh, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Uh, this is the story of Jesus being baptized. Uh, let, let me just, just fill you in with some of the details. So, so John the Baptist, which was Jesus' cousin, he's out in the wilderness and he's, and he's baptizing people. He's calling people to repentance. So this was a different type of baptism. This was a, a, a cleansing of sin, a, a washing away of sin. And people were coming in droves. And Jesus showed up on the scene and he says, I want to get baptized. And John says, no, 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 no. You baptize me. I, you, uh, no, you baptize me. You be sinless. I'm not, I'm not going to baptize you. you. You baptize me. And Jesus says, no, I need you, I need you to baptize me. And they kind of go back and forth a little bit. And, then, and finally, John baptizes Jesus. But this was a different kind of baptism. This was an inauguration 
for Jesus, for the ministry of Christ. This was, a, this was the beginning of a, of a, of a new people, of a, of a new spiritual clan, and, and Jesus is that spiritual leader. He is the point, and so this is an inauguration that is, is, is taking place here. But I, 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 want, you, I want you to catch this, that, that this, is, this is what we do as followers of Jesus. We, we choose baptism because Jesus was baptized and we do what Jesus does. So let, me, let me say that again. What Jesus does, we do. What Jesus does, we do. You guys say that with me. What Jesus does, we do. It's, it's really that simple. We're, we're followers of Jesus. And so baptism makes sense to us. He started us off with that. The, 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 second, the second reason we get baptized is, is to obey his command. So if you fast forward to Matthew, to the end of Matthew, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, we read what is known as the Great Commission. So this is Jesus. Uh, he, he, this is shortly before he ascends into heaven. These are, these are words we talk about a lot at the court. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And then what's the next word? Baptizing. Bab- baptizing. That, that, that's, that, that becomes the pattern for Christians. People, people re- believe, they repent, and they're baptized. And this, this pattern, this pattern I- emerges. People are baptized into the, the name of the Father and the Son and, and the Holy Spirit. They're immersed, they're immersed with the declaration of their allegiance for God. See, I, I want to be really clear here, because baptism is primarily, is primarily an obedience to Christ's issue. We get baptized because when we're, we're commanded to. It, become, it became the pattern for all, for all Christians. So the question for us is, do we, do we want to be followers of Jesus? Do we want to follow after Jesus? Or do we just want to do things our own way, in our own, in our own time? But we, we follow the king. That's the choice. We follow the king. So this is, this is just a natural step for us. All right, second question. What is the meaning of baptism? Okay, so why we get baptized, but now what's, what's the meaning of baptism? And for that, I want you to turn to Colossians, the, the little epistle, the little letter that Paul wrote to the, book, the, the, the church in Colossae. Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to look at, at verses 12 through 15 and kind of break that out a little bit. What's the meaning of baptism? Well, the first is that baptism is really a celebration of the grace of Christ, of what, of what Christ has done for us paid a price for us. Let, let me read to you Colossians 2. This is, this is a powerful passage. Having been buried with him in baptism, the imagery is, is really profound here. You also have been raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And even though you were dead in your transgressions and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he nevertheless made you alive with him, having forgiven all your transgressions. He has destroyed what's, what, what was against us, sin and death, a certificate of indebtedness expressed in our decrees opposed to us. He has taken it away by nailing it to the cross. And I love this. Disarming the rulers and authorities. He has made a public disgrace of them, triumphing over them by the cross. This is, this is the expression of the grace of Jesus, what he did. He died on a cross, not because of his guilt, but because of our guilt. He was our substitute. And then he rose from the grave, conquering death altogether as our Savior. He triumphed over the rulers and the authorities. He did all that, not us. He did all that. See, Scripture is very clear that baptism gets its meaning through the faith that we have in what Jesus did for us, not in what we do, but what in Jesus has done for us. We declare our belief in Jesus who made a way for us to be right with our God. He did all that. 
And so we wear his righteousness, not our own. In baptism, we are declaring that we belong to him. We belong to him. And that, that means something. That, that baptism isn't necessary for salvation. I, I want you to hear that because there's some confusion around this. Baptism isn't necessary for salvation. Our salvation is secure because, because of our belief in Christ, because of our declaration of who Jesus is and what he has done. Because of our repentance, we have, we have been saved, not, not through baptism. But that doesn't mean that baptism is unimportant. It's incredibly important as a step in our journey with Jesus. All right, so what, what's, the, what's the meaning of baptism? It's a celebration of the grace of, of Christ, what he has done. It's also, it's also a new mark of faith. It's a new mark of faith. If you look at verse 11 of, of, of chapter 2 in Colossians, this is, this is so cool. We read that in him you are also circumcised. Whoa, okay, hold on. So circumcision, right? Circumcision was, was a mark. It's, it's, an, it's an Old Testament mark of the people of God. It, it's, a, it's a declaration in that moment that you belong to the people of God. At eight days old, boys, not girls, boys were, were circumcised. And that was the mark that was on them, that they belonged. They belonged to the people of God. But, but things, are, things are changing. There's a new covenant a new, there's, there's now a new people, a spiritual people that are bound not just by DNA, but by a different kind of circumcision. In him, you were also circumcised, not, however, with a circumcision performed by human hands, but by the removal of the fleshly body, that is, through the circumcision done by Christ. You have been circumcised by, by Christ, having been baptized having been buried with him in, baptize, in baptism, there is a mark on you. This is, this is the new mark for a new people. And that mark is no longer physical circumcision. It's the circumcision of the heart. And the mark of that is, is baptism. Right? Having been, having been buried with him in baptism, you have also been raised with him through your faith in the power of God who's raised him from the dead. And this is so significant because circumcision, the mark was only for men, only for the males. But now, but now the mark is for both men and women. Baptism is a new mark of faith. And finally, finally, baptism is a picture, is a picture of the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. Did you, did you see that in verse 12? Right? Having been buried with him in baptism. See, when, when we get baptized, we, 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 we join Jesus. We declare that we are joining Jesus in his death. So we are dying. We are dying to ourselves. As you go underneath the water, you're dying to yourself. And as you come up out of that water, the symbolism is so strong. And it's, in fact, what happens on a spiritual level, that we are raised again as Christ is raised. The same power is in us. When we go under the water, we identify with the death of Christ. When we come out of the water, we illustrate that we have also joined Jesus in his resurrection. Baptism is a picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is so significant for us. All right, question number three. How should we be baptized? How should we be baptized? Now, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this one, uh, but I'll, I'll just say this, that that, that, that word, uh, baptizo, uh, is, is the Greek. We, we just say bab, baptize or baptism, right? It, 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 means, it means, literally means to immerse, to submerge, to, to dunk. And so, so, so John the Baptist was John the dunker. I mean, that, that, that's how we, we translate that. It, it literally means to, to put under, underwater to wash. So, so it's, it's clear that this means immersion, to go underneath the water, and we see the example in Scripture is immersion, right? In, in Jesus, in, in Mark 1.10, he is immersed in the Jordan River. Uh, Acts 8.36 and 39, we have, we have Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. They're, they're traveling along the road, and the eunuch says, hey, man, uh, I should get baptized right now. Stop. I see some water. Let's go down into the water. It wasn't, hey, let's go. You got a cup? 
let's go, can you grab a cup and bring it back up here and, and put it, pour it over my head? And it was, no, we're all in. The example, the overwhelming biblical evidence, the standard is immersion. Now, I get that, that we all come from different backgrounds. And, and you may have, have experienced something where, where you declared your faith in Jesus Christ, and then after that you were baptized by some other method, maybe, maybe sprinkling, or I, I, I'm not sure what that would look like for you. And I'm not here to say that that, that, that wasn't significant or that doesn't count. I, I don't want to get into that, that realm. I want to keep the heart of what this is all about. What I, what I simply want, want to say here is that when we look at Scripture, and that's what I want us to be as a people of the Bible, the standard is immersion. All in, dying, going underneath the water, and coming and coming up out. All right, four, fourth question. Who should be baptized? Who should be baptized? All right, we're going to go back to Acts chapter 2. But really, it, it's, it's anyone, anyone who has placed their faith in Jesus Christ and repented from their sin. The, 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 the formula here, the requirements for baptism is repentance and faith. Or it's really faith and repentance. The, stand, the, 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 the requirements are, are belief, faith, and repentance. So when, when, they, when they are asked the question, what should we do? And Peter just says, repent and be baptized. Right? You, you believe now, so re- repent, and then, and then let's get baptized. So who should get baptized? Anyone who makes that declaration, who has faith in Jesus and has repented from their sins. Now, what that means, and this, is, this, this, this gets a little tenuous, what that means is that uh, we don't do infant baptism at the quarry. Because, because an, infant, an infant doesn't have the ability or the opportunity to confess their faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I, I, I know that that's a challenge because some of us come from traditions where we're, uh, regularly we baptize infants. I was baptized when I was about three months old. And then at age 22, when I realized that this was my decision, not my, not my parents, and it wasn't about me denying what my parents did or, or saying what you did was wrong, it was about me saying this is my faith and so I'm going to take that step. And so I made, that, I made that declaration that I belong to Jesus. Because uh, as, you look at, as you look at scriptures, that there's, there's no reference in scripture that a parent makes that decision for a child. It's, it's believer baptism. And, and that's, that's what we practice. Now, some questions come out of this. And, you know, one of the questions we often get is, well, hold on, what, what, about, what about something like confirmation? So th- this, is, this is my background, too. So, so right, I, I was baptized as a baby, and then, and then right around eighth or ninth grade, you go through this confirmation process. And at the end of that confirmation, what that means is I'm confirming what my parents did for me back in the day. And so we're validating that. They kind of covered that gap, and now I'm just confirming that. Well, I, I don't find that in Scripture. Right? I, I, I just don't see it there. And, and again, I want, I want to keep the heart of what baptism is about. It's about a believer proclaiming that they belong to God. And so what I want you to think about, I want you to think about, you know, uh, what was baptism for you? Is If you were baptized, you know, in, 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 in the order of, of Scripture, which means this, that, that I believed, and then I repented, and then I was baptized, then, then you followed through on the biblical pattern of believer baptism. But, it, but if you look back on that day where you made that declaration, or maybe you haven't yet made that, that I'm a follower of Jesus, and you were baptized before that, then, then I, I would encourage you, I would encourage you to consider baptism. Because this is, this is your proclamation. Nobody, nobody else can do this for you. This is your proclamation. The, the, uh, the last question, when? When should I get baptized? When should I get baptized? And, and again, let's, let's start with Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Because the, the pattern in Scripture is you get baptized as soon as possible after conversion. As soon as possible. Now, now, now in the church, we, we've kind of messed with that quite a bit. 
right? Because, because baptism becomes this party. It's something we have to prepare for and, 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 and call all the family members and get them together. Well, you can't make it then. Well, I'm going to postpone my baptism then until you can make it. Or, or I want to get baptized at the, in the Jordan River, so I'm going to hold off on this thing. Or I want to do it in the ocean. Or I want to do it at a lake. Or, it, it's about following God. It's not about the ceremony. It's about following after God. And, and the pattern that we find in Scripture is as soon, as soon after conversion as possible, you, you get baptized. And let, let's just look at this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, maybe you just want to write these verses down and look at them, look at them later. But this, these are all in the book of Acts. This is Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse, verse 12. This is, this is Philip, again, one of Jesus' close followers. We read that, but, but when they believed Philip, Philip was preaching the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized right in that moment. They believed and they were baptized, both men and women. A little bit later in uh, chapter 8, verse 36, this is Philip and at eunuch again, right? They're, they're, tr- they're in the middle of the desert, traveling along the road, and he's reading and he's convicted. And the eunuch says, oh, stop right now. Let's get baptized. There's water. Believe and be baptized. Acts 9.18, this is the Apostle Paul, right? He has an encounter with Jesus, and we read, and immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. Believe and be baptized. Believe and be baptized. Acts, Acts 16, 14 and 15. The Lord opened uh, her, and her here is Lydia's heart, to pay attention to what Paul, what Paul was preaching. And, and after, she was baptized, and her whole house, household as well. Believe and be baptized. And, and the last one I'll give you is Acts 18, 8. We read that Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and we're baptized. That, that, friends, is the pattern that we see all throughout Scripture. Believe, repent, be baptized. Now, this, this creates a little bit of a challenge for some of you. Because some of you have been followers for Jesus for, for a, a, a considerable length of time. And you're thinking, well, I, what's the point now? I, I kind of missed it, right? I, I probably should have done this years ago, but I, I didn't. And so, what, what's the point? And I the point is this, that we are followers of Jesus, and he commands us to. This is incredibly significant in your walk with Christ, to learn how to step where he steps, to follow where he leads. The bottom line is this, that baptism is a declaration to the world that we belong to Jesus. It, it, it's, it's a powerful thing, more, more than a symbol, right? It's a, it's a declaration that we belong to Jesus. I, 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 want you to, I want you to think about it about it like this. Let me see if I can do this. It's been a few years. Okay. So I want you to think about it uh, like this wedding ring. So, so 25 years ago, uh, in a church in Robbinsdale, uh, uh, my wife and I stood in front of about 300 people, and uh, the, the pastor gave gave her a ring and uh, gave me a ring, and and I and I put on I put that ring on her finger, and 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 with that with that she declared to the world that she belongs to me, that she belongs to me, right? And then and then and then she put she put this ring on on my finger. And in that moment, I declared to the world that, that I belong to her. We were, we were marked in that moment. More, more than just a symbol, this was a declaration. It continues to be a de- declaration everywhere we go that, that I belong to her and she belongs to me, that we are, we are united. And, and in, in a very similar way, but which, with much deeper meaning, The God of the universe has reached down his hand and placed your hands in his. He he pursues you with with a passion, a passion so great that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you, to, to pay the price for you. He has united us in a relationship with him. He has given his all for this relationship. And in the middle of it, he's given us this picture, this picture of his gospel the picture that declares that we belong to him. And so when, when we're baptized 
It's way more than just a symbol. It is a declaration, like, like, a, like a standing up on a mountaintop at the, very, at the very height of my voice, a declaration that I belong to Jesus Christ, that, that he is mine and I am his. It's a celebration of the grace that he has given, a proclamation that he is more precious than anything else on the planet. It's a declaration that he is God, and we belong to him. And in light of that, why wouldn't, why wouldn't anyone want to be baptized? God, God help us as a people to value the significance of what baptism means in our journey with Christ. God help us not, not to walk in disobedience, but to follow him wherever he leads. And it seems to be through scripture that that first step really is, it's baptism. And so this morning, we are going to celebrate the grace of God. We are going to declare our allegiance to God. And we're going to let God mark us as part of his family through the sacrament of baptism. So here, here's how this is going to happen. Uh, in, in just a moment, I'm going to, I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward, and we're going to receive our offering for the morning. And while, that, while that's happening, if God has put it on your heart that, that this is your moment, this is your time, then I want to encourage you, really, to be brave. And to stand up and walk through those doors. And then uh, somebody in a shirt, I believe it's Matt Henning, in a shirt just like this, is going to be out there. I mean, he's going to greet you, and he's going to take you where you need to go. And basically, you're going to walk around back here and, 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 uh, and, and get ready for, for baptism. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, I, I, really, I really didn't come prepared. We took care of that. So what I'm told is that everything you need, and I mean everything you need, is in this, this little bag. We, we have got underwear, we've got, we've got makeup, we've got t-shirts, we've got shorts, uh, we've got towels, uh, not in this bag, evidently. Uh, we, we have what you need. We want to take away every barrier that you might have for this. This is such, this is such a big deal. And then uh, uh, following our offering, uh, people are going to start just coming into this tub. And Mike Sanders is going to be in there with you, and he's one of our leaders, and, and he, will, he will baptize you. And the rest of us are going to sing worship songs as this is taking place. This is a party, you guys. An incredible opportunity for us to declare that we belong to Jesus. All right. So with that, uh, I just want to pray, and then I'm going to have the ushers come forward, and we'll We'll continue on. Would you bow your heads? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, when we, when we put it all together and we look at what baptism is, that it really is about this declaration of your greatness, of your wonder, of your, of your glory, of your grace. We thank you for the opportunity to do just that. It marks us, God as a people, as your people. And so, Lord, in this moment, I just pray that you, you just move among us and you, you speak to our hearts, God, and you give us the same boldness that Peter had as he stood before that crowd of thousands and that we can declare with confidence that we belong to you. In spite of where we've been, we don't have to have life figured out. You meet us right in this place. It is your grace that covers us. Our works don't satisfy you. But the life of Jesus has. We thank you, God. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to have the ushers come forward, and we're going to receive the offering today. And just, just a, a word about the offering. You know, this is... Uh, The offering is, is an act of worship. It's where we declare with, 
with our treasure that he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And I just, I just encourage you, uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, that this is a place you live, a, a place of generosity where, where it's not something that we hold tightly to our stuff, but we give freely to who God is and what he's doing. Now, if that's new to you, then let the basket pass you by without any kind of guilt, okay? Uh, this really is about worship. Now, as the offering is happening, and uh, you'll notice we, we, we pass baskets, very traditional, but we also, uh, you know, um, a lot of us give electronically uh, through push pay. And if, if, if that makes more sense for you, man, get that app and, and do what you need to do in that area, okay? But as we're receiving the offering, um, if God's put that on your heart, then you walk out those doors. And let's get this done. And let's celebrate what God is doing, okay? All right. <clears throat> let's pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, God, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Everything we have is yours. We are yours, God. And we want to respond to who you are and what you've done. And so we present to you in this moment our, our tithes and our, and our offerings. You are the King. And so, Lord, we receive these and do with them what you wish. Multiply them, God, all, all for your glory. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.